space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Captain's Log, Stardate 5444.9. The Enterprise is on a charting run through the partially explored Moran sector. Since this region seems relatively devoid of suns and planets, we expect to be finished here in a few days. Kirk out. Not soon enough for me, Captain. Bored, Mr. Connors? I thought you liked solitude and quiet. I do, Captain, but there are limits to one's ability to enjoy nothingness. Look at the screen. No planets worthy of investigating. Hardly any stars. Not even any interesting phenomena like quasars or black holes or redisars. Just parsecs and parsecs of nothing. We should be through here by tomorrow, ship time, Connors. In the meantime... <whistles> Lieutenant Uhura. Yes, Captain? Aren't you going to acknowledge? Acknowledge what, Captain? Wasn't that an incoming communication? No, sir. I thought it came from the navigation console. Mr. Sulu. Uh, not from here, sir. There, that's it. All systems neutral, Captain. It's not any of our instrumentation. What is it, Mr. Spock? I don't know, Captain. I've never heard anything quite like it. Commencing sensor scan. Uhura, are you sure nothing's trying to call in? Positive, Captain. No one on board is sending either. Mr. Sulu, Mr. Connors? All clear, Captain. No sign of any auditory malfunction. All instruments functioning normally. Connors, are you sure there's no ship out there? Certain, Captain. If there is, it doesn't register on our screens. Mr. Spock, anything from the computer? Nothing definite, Captain. We appear to have encountered a previously unknown physical phenomenon. There are faint indications it is highly localized while remaining diffused. That's contradictory, Mr. Spock. Quite, Captain. The computer is equally confused. There's one more possibility. All hands, this is the captain speaking. I'm aware that this assignment has been less than exciting thus far. This is no excuse for interfering with ship's communications. Whoever is generating semi-musical noises on the bridge will please cease such activities immediately. I guess that... I don't think this is the product of someone's peculiar sense of humor, Captain. This doesn't sound like any kind of music I've ever encountered. I have to agree, Spock. But if the source isn't outside the ship and it isn't inside... Then where is it coming from? An excellent question, Captain. Captain's Log Supplementary. The mysterious music has been with us for three days now and gives indications of increasing rather than abating. Every effort to locate some source for the sounds has proven futile. We are no closer to an explanation now than we were days ago. I feel it incumbent on me to point out that if this keeps up, crew efficiency is bound to suffer. I'm aware of the problem, Mr. Spock. There doesn't seem to be any way to shut out the sound except by plugging one's ears. It's still hard to sleep, and we can't have everyone walking around with earplugs. I can't run this ship by sign language. Speaking of earplugs, Spock... Please, Doctor, for once try to be serious. Besides, I believe I have isolated the cause of the sound. If it's a natural phenomenon, it behaves in the most unexpected fashion. Rising in certain sections of the ship while falling in others, as if it were moving bodily about. Oh, come on, Spock. There are definite modulations in the noise which suggest other than random origin. Some possess almost vocal undertones. I am left with only one hypothesis, that we are being visited by a being of pure sound. Pure sound? Pure hogwash? The most ridiculous part of it is... I think you're right, Spock. I only wish there was some way we could tell it to shut up. Crazy. It keeps getting louder. Do you think it's aware of us as intelligences, Bones? I don't know, Jim. It's an incredible theory, 
but as Spock says, nothing else seems to fit. I've already had some cases of people who can't get to sleep even with strong earplugs. I've got a solution to that, at least for the worst cases. What's that? Nurse Chapel is monitoring the shuttle. The influence of this noise doesn't extend beyond the ship. Once outside, people can sleep in peace again. The shuttle will only hold so many, even in relays. We've got to find a way to turn it off. I might add, Captain, that we have no way of estimating the volume this creature can produce. It could conceivably drive everyone on board permanently deaf if not stopped. I might as well share the rest of the bad news with you. Lieutenant Uhura, tell them. You see, the deep space beam is useless, all channels. All I can get is static or variations on the central musical rhythm. We're cut off. I'm still keeping several channels open for incoming calls, however. Maybe someone will listen in and be able to tell we're in trouble. More likely, they'll just think we're having a heck of a party. That leaves us with only one choice. Somehow, we're going to have to make contact with this thing. Tell it what it's doing. Make it understand. Spock, do you think it's capable of communicating? If so, Captain, you have not responded to any of the several attempts I've made. If it does comprehend, it is choosing to ignore our voices, codes, and screen signs I've displayed throughout the ship. Can't we fight back somehow, Spock? Fight pure sound, Doctor. How? Oh. We could overpower it with more sound. That might drive us insane or deaf faster than the creature. It might also anger us. It might find a blast of artificial sound challenging like another of its own kind. I cannot imagine what its belligerent response would be, except to guess it would not be pleasant. Everyone okay? That one hurt. All right here, Captain, but half the transparent facings on my instruments are gone. Damage reports coming in, Captain, from all over the ship. The danger is no longer theoretical, Captain. The creature appears able to reproduce any frequency it desires. Presumably, it is potentially capable of sonically destroying any substance on board. Whether it is doing this intentionally or inadvertently will not matter if it happens to hit upon the resonating factor of the human bone. We've got to make contact somehow. Maybe trying to contact us, Jim. It's liable to end up killing us trying to contact us. There's got to be a way. Mr. Sulu? Mr. Connors? Where's Lieutenant Connors? He left a few minutes ago, Captain, during that painful burst of noise. I... Lieutenant Connors, you left your post without... What is that thing? If someone would lend me aid. Here, let me. I recognize it, Captain. An Edoan Elysiar. A triple keyboard operates an echo chamber. Resonating bars made of bone something that rather resembles an earthly xylophone twisted into a Mobius strip. What are you going to do, Mr. Connors? Captain, the noise, my ears. Connors, what are you? I'm going to attempt to communicate with it, Captain. The only way we haven't yet tried. Mr. Spock spoke of fighting noise with noise. Somehow I feel there is a thing here that it needs to be understood, not fought. I will start by improvising, trying to work from one of the alien's themes. Continue, Connors. It's reacting, Jim. It understands. Keep playing, Lieutenant. The universal language, music. We've said it for thousands of years. I never thought I'd see it interpreted literally. Stay with it, Connors. I'm trying, Captain. How lovely. The alien as symphony. There's a logical classification for you, Spock. Mathematical precision is certainly inspiring, Doctor. Captain, I'm getting tired. I don't know if I can keep up. You've got to, Connors. We can't risk breaking off now. We may never re-establish contact again. Jim, how are we going to explain to it what we wanted to do? I don't know. Spock? I don't know either, Captain. I don't know if the terms music and language are truly interchangeable. Connors, play something sad. Convince it all is not well. joins logic to its sounds. Emotion, you mean?
Jim, maybe it... No, it didn't understand. It didn't understand at all. It's no good, Jim. It didn't work. Wait, Bones. Give it time. Connors! Captain! I can't keep up. I can't. It's not possible. Do your best, Mr. Connors. It's gone. It's finally gone. Gone where, Jim? Who knows, Bones? We don't know where it came from. We can't imagine where it goes. I hope it went away happy. Perhaps someday, when we understand a little more about how our own music affects us, we'll be ready to understand and communicate with creatures like it a little better. I heard a voice crying in the wilderness. What was that, Lieutenant? Nothing, sir. All channels appear clear now. Shall I contact the nearest Starfleet base? No, no, we don't appear to have sustained any serious damage. We'll finish this charting run as planned. Mr. Connors, thank you. My arms feel like two corings of a planetary center, Captain. But I believe I actually enjoyed it. I've never had such a fluid, responsive musical partner. Did you say something, Bones? Hmm? Oh, I was just wondering, Jim. Do you think we'll ever find it again? I think so, Bones. When we're able to talk to it, I think it wanted to talk to us. It'll be back. Bones, have you ever listened to any violin concertos? I'm not much of a classical uh, aficionado, Jim. There are times when that lone violin is up there against all those other instruments, and they're quiet, and that one violin is the loneliest sound in the world. I think our visitor meant us no harm. It was just plain lonely. Mr. Connors, maintain course. Mr. Sulu, Mr. Spock, resume charting procedures. 